Hi everybody, welcome down to Carter's Golf. Thank you very much for checking out the channel. And today we are, we're in a little predicament, so to speak, because this is hard, okay? We've got very small green to work with and I've got a quite a deep, scary bunker to go over. And I'm on the fairway and the fairway's quite tight. So we don't have that nice fluffy fairways where we can maybe open the blade and hit the big Hollywood shot, which to be fair, is still scary enough, isn't it? We've got to try and figure out how we can get up and down for par. Now, also as well, we can look at this from a perspective of if you've got a shot on a par four, you're an 18 handicap, or this is one of the hardest holes on the golf course, and you're in this situation in two, sometimes you've just got to take your medicine. If you make bogey net par, you move on to the next. Nothing lost, nothing gained. But if you're in a position where you, you want to really try and make sure that you're getting up and down for par and how to execute it, this is what we're going to try and do. So, Normally, you'd look at golfers and they think, right, okay, I'm going to open this club face up. I'm going to swing right across it. I'm going to pop this ball up into the air. And then nine out of ten times, that happens. Stop, stop, stop. Really don't want to lose my balls when I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, so now I've got another chip for par from probably further away. Sometimes you just can't open the club face. If the fairway's not allowing you to do it, by opening the club face, you're increasing the amount of bounce, which therefore means the leading edge of the actual wedge is gonna to be too high on the ball, making it very, very difficult to actually get under the golf ball effectively. So what I've got, I've got a lob wedge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm the most important, make sure I get a nice strike. A good strike then I'm gonna get some nice little bit of stop on the golf ball now when we're talking about spin spin doesn't isn't just about the technique of what you do it's about the wedge you're playing it's about the golf ball you're playing it's about the greens that you're hitting into and obviously then it's the quality of the strike so there are three variables before you even land the golf ball on the green so I've got a Pro V1 I've got an SM8 Vokey wedge 58 degree eight degree of bounce. So it's a, it's, I've got all the tools to hit a good shot. Now the main tool, which is me, I'm an absolute tool, needs to be good, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I don't want my grip to start to manipulate this club face too much in my swing. So I'm gonna weaken my left hand. You may have seen this in previous videos. I always weaken my left hand when I'm doing some chipping and pitching because it stabilizes this left wrist. The last thing we want to see is that club face rotating and rolling all over the place and then we have to manipulate it as we come back into the ball. We don't want to do that. So I want to try and get into a position where my left wrist is stabilizing the face, up into the air quite high, just timing, okay? Now that sounds odd, doesn't it? I want to make sure that my, as I come through the shot, my wrist starts to work and the club face starts to point back towards me. Now this is a high risk shot. This is your very high risk shot because you want to make sure that you nip it absolutely perfectly so you get that height. I don't want to do any more demonstrations. That is the best I could do. One of the key things I did in my setup then is I kept the ball position forward of my stance, okay? And I also actually kept the shaft of the club slightly behind the ball. Now, I didn't open the club face because that brings more bounce and the leading edge higher into the ball, but I pulled my actual wedge handle slightly back behind the ball. I got slightly weaker grips and my wrists don't really move too much. And then I allowed this right hand to kind of slide under the golf ball. Like I said, it's a stupidly high risk shot. But when that happens, it feels worth it. Now, can I do it twice in a row? Decent connection, over hit it. Which nine times out of, well, eight times out of 10, you'll take that. It's a chance of par. It's on the green, it's not in the bunker, it's a decent connection, decent strike, I just over hit the shot. Now for golfers, if you've got a shot, if you've got a shot on this hole, okay, and you're not overly confident, the, the lie's quite, quite tight, I've got the bunker in the way, where that golf ball has just finished is a good landing area. Forget this flag, the flag is a tough flag. Go for your stand, bog standard pitch shot, where you're just pitching it towards that, that ball, and then obviously you need to make sure you're taking your 
your two putts. You don't want to turn that into a three putt. So again, I'd go for. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother with the club face now. I keep the. I keep my ball position slightly forward. I keep the handle of the club on the inside of my left thigh. Standard chip. It's come out a lot flatter. It's landed at that other golf ball because it's a nice strike. It's probably got maybe six six foot of roll on it as it's landed, and now I've got 25 feet back for par. Hopefully walking out of here. Worst case scenario with bogey. So it's really important to make sure that you assess the situation because the next hole as well, I know this golf course very well, the next hole is a very difficult par three. So if I blow a load of shots on here, it puts me under a lot of pressure on the next hole with water on the left. So if I can walk off here with the worst case bogey, then I'm not stood on the next tee panicking about loop ma making up shots, having messed up on the previous hole. So that's massively important when you are playing is start thinking about the outcome. Is it the worst thing in the world to make a bogey? No. It's not great to make double. It's certainly becoming the worst thing in the world to start making triple. So assess your situation. This shot to that flag, hard. Very, very difficult. Okay? Get the ball onto the green 20, 25 feet away and try and take your two putt. Much more realistic, much more relaxing as you're actually hitting the shot. You're not then thinking about this bunker. You're thinking about landing it past the flag to get a nice um, to get a nice outcome, nice finish position. So then it gives you the opportunity to go and get that two putt bogey and just walk off to the next. And then actually, what I should say, have a little word with yourself and figure why on earth have you missed it here? <laughs> and this is the one thing you see a lot of the tour pros, they don't very rarely miss and they short side themselves. When they're hitting, in, if they were hitting into that flag, which is on the right side of the green next to a bunker, the golf ball will go either at the flag because they're awesome or it'll go left of the flag. It'll be, they'll be really messing up to push this ball and miss it right of the flag, right of the bunker and onto the fairway on the right hand side. So start to also judge where you should miss. If you were missing on the other side of the rough, you'd be feeling a lot more comfortable with life about chipping it back down the hill. What, are you serious? You think over here is better? That's, 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 that's controversial, I'll be honest. You don't want to be missing either side of the green by this much, but we still want to be going with the same technique. So we're going to go for the, the, the weaker grip. We're going to stabilize the wrist. We're going to use the body. It's a good strike. Probably landed that a little bit too far. No, it's a good shot. Take, taking the break. And there's a much more of a chance of par from this side of the green than there is from the other. Wouldn't you agree? So also assess where you, why you're in this situation. Because as much as this, this chip shot is quite difficult, you shouldn't be here in the first place. That's another really good way of kind of assessing and anal analyzing what you're actually doing as well. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tip. Please do follow me on social media platforms. We've got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you are new to the channel, you've enjoyed this tip, and there's many, many more to come, please do also hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you again in future videos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I thank you. I thank you.